All right, boys and girls, welcome back to another quick installment of Julian's Random Projects. I think it's official. <laughs> the uh, TID radio, the H3 model, the TD H3, is going to eat everyone else's lunch, and it's going to be the radio to have for 2024. Uh, if you are getting into GMRS or I'll, I'll even say it, even even ham, I suppose. This radio is a sore dick deal. The the going price right now is like forty dollars. I think I've seen it as low as twenty nine right now, which might even be a loss leader. I don't know um, cheap labor. I don't know how you get this much uh, tech and this much quality into something that is sub forty dollars. And uh, if you can get it on sale for thirty, thirty five, whatever, buy that thing at fifty dollars. This thing is still a screaming deal uh, for what you get. I should mention that I normally don't do uh, product placement, but I've, I've enjoyed some of these manufacturers sending me early examples of their radios before they hit the streets. And this is one that I've had for a few weeks now, and I've really been able to put it through its paces and compare it to some of the other offerings um, you know, that exist out in the world. And in a sort of cons in a uh, consumer advice type video, I'm going to be jumping through all the features I think that are making this a standout radio in 2024 and uh, there's gonna be some jump cuts and so I'm gonna try to get through those uh, to save you guys some time uh, if you're looking for a GMRS radio you found it and then uh, follow along to see why I think so so these come with a stock antenna and it's okay if you're uh, it's it's set up for for ham use so the UHF and VHF calling frequencies it's uh, more or less dialed in and I've confirmed that on the nano VNA I will save you time and not have you look at that um, I've also checked it uh, checked transmission with some of the test equipment that I've got here uh, of course your mileage may vary even here inside I've got a piece of calibrated test equipment and I've got a home gamer type watt meter and SWR meter that does okay it'll let you know that you're power out what kind of range you're in but this does not agree with my very expensive and calibrated piece of equipment over here uh, it's almost a watt off so uh, the power out of get, getting on this is a little bit above five watts across uh, most of the bands that it's using and specifically GMRS which is what I'm focusing on uh, lately I like to swap out if I'm just using it here at the homestead uh, and around town I like to swap out the kind of typical antennas with uh, the stubby bob type antennas and of course uh, shill links down in the description box on where you can get your own uh, little stubby antennas uh, these things are awesome uh, they, they're smooth so they don't catch things and uh, they make this already small form factor even smaller so I don't have a banana for scale here and everyone's hands are different but I think this is about four inches by two inches not counting the clip I don't know, I've been lying about six inches so long it's hard to tell anymore let's see if I can uh, yeah about four inches by two by one and a half and very compact um, even smaller like really fits in the hand when you omit the the clip um, I still find the clip pretty helpful um, for hanging it on things here I've got it hung up on some some glass holders in the truck you might have seen in the in the truck there one of the killer features for this thing is that it can actually switch over to AM mode and uh, pick up air traffic or you know a, a big chunks of the bandwidth that are used by your airport uh, t tower like a control tower uh, to bring planes in and out and uh, you know land them on different runways uh, i find that valuable especially if you're using this radio for some preparedness listening to the radio traffic at your local airport uh, will give you an idea of you know the frequency of flights that are coming in are there zero flights coming in like that's potentially you know good intel to have and you'll you'll hear the difference in that audio quality uh it's it sounds a little different than what we're used to with some of these fm uh radios and that's it's a bit outside the scope of this video but for for, for safety reasons uh planes and airports are still using am to communicate i like that it has dual monitor uh for the for the frequencies so while i'm listening to the airport i can also be monitoring one of the gmrs uh channels that i use um it's repeater capable here I am hitting a repeater that's like 20 plus miles away from the hillside that I'm standing on. Uh, 
uh, as you can see, I, there's that valley, that's the town that I live in below it, and um, that repeater is on the very far back side, it's technically in another town that neighbors it. So very capable. I like the audio quality, not since the Wuxan or Ocean, however you want to pronounce it, um, which has, uh, has discrete circuits in here to get the audio quality way up. And the system on a chip uh, type SDR system that's inside the TDH3 is giving it a run for its money for sure on uh, audio quality. It sounds great. The other killer feature for this, and it's going to go in my series of USB-C all the things. Um, I'm not buying new rechargeable products unless they can charge over USB-C. And uh, TID Radio had that in spades with uh, their slightly larger and a little bit more powerful at 10 watts um, TDH8. And you could charge it over USB-C right there, which was awesome. You put it in, you know, in, the, in the car on like a mount or something, you could have it charging while you're driving around indefinitely. You know, in, you're sitting next to all your other devices at home. You can plug it in. You're not searching for a special cable for your um, your walkie-talkie here. They've gone one further on the H3, and they've added USB-C programming. So gone are the days of looking out for the the goofy little dongle that you know, a lot of these radios are using. Now it's a Kenwood, I think. Uh, Kenwood One, some kind of standard, uh, which is nice, and lots of other uh, HTs and handsets by all different manufacturers started to follow that same trend. Midlands, uh, Redivis, Baofeng, all of them, they're all following that uh, that plug separation. But it is still nice that your charging cable can also be your programming cable and one cable to rule them all, as it were. I will mention that this data programming plug is not for charging. If you want to charge it, you're still going in the uh, the bottom end here and charging it up. And it's got uh, some decent opaque LED indicator to let you know what state of charge it is, similar to the dock, which is also USB-C. So uh, if you want, if this ends up being your daily carry here, your your everyday carry radio, and you've got your charging station set up at home with your phone and your watch and all that other jazz that needs to be charged daily. This can just be sitting there, USB-C, ready to go for, for docking, just like that. And then a little indicator lets you know. I've been getting multiple days of battery life on this, on, on receive, and um, less if you're talking on it a lot, uh, which is another thing I'll mention. Rock these on the lowest power that you can get away with. If it's just you and your neighbor, and you guys can talk on low, be on low. It'll save your battery a ton. There's not, you're not winning some kind of award for blasting out the most power. That's not how the, you know, that's not how this all works. Uh, if you're having trouble hit or hitting a repeater that's 60 miles away, yeah, bump up the power and see if that gets you there. So this radio doesn't just have the one way of charging. It's got three. <laughs> USB-C, it can still do the old school Kenwood charging. If, if you've got that cable or someone else grabs this and they don't realize that that's for charging or they don't have one handy, they've, they've only got the other one. You can program here, here, and a third way is cloning over the air, which I'll demonstrate. The Vulcan Death Grip for wirelessly uh, cloning your radio is to press the third button on the side below the two uh, push to talk buttons. Press that and star at the same time while you turn it on. It'll go into wireless copy. Now, this the radios you want to copy also need to be in that mode, otherwise you'll be you know flashing your neighbors and your friends and stuff. So we're gonna do the same cool button combo. One, two, three, power it on. Wireless copy. So with the radio that has the settings you like and it's ready to go. This is your buddy's radio. He's got it all dialed in and you're joining the, the, the camping trip. You want what he's got. You put yours in wireless copy mode and you set it down. You don't touch it. Then this guy, like feeding a baby bird, he shoves it down its throat this way by pressing this button. And it'll do that for some time, and then it'll show you that you've had success on both ends. Where the volume's at, it doesn't really matter. I've just got it up for demonstration purposes so you can see that this thing's transmitting and receiving, this one's transmitting and receiving, acknowledging, yes, I got that packet, give me another packet, that kind of thing. Um, in a future video, I'll experiment with <laughs> what happens when you've got two radios <laughs> that want to get cloned and they're on at the same time. I think because they're transmitting it to, uh, to ACK, 
to acknowledge that they got something, they could be stepping on each other and that could get problematic, but we'll play with that. Um, so then we just turn these things off and you'll see as this one boots up, there you go. It has all the settings, uh, in, including preferences and you saw there that even the splash screen that's customized uh, or customizable, that's all transferred over. And so that, that to me, is a killer killer feature and for this to have three ways of programming it and then when you pick some of those ways you've got multiple places to program it you can use chirp which is open source and amazing you can use uh, the proprietary one from tid radio and you can also use um uh, you, can, you can also use an ios app whose name escapes me now let me uh rtfm here for a moment uh od master that's right uh, so you find OD Master in uh, the Google Play Store for your Android device or on iOS, and same thing. It will, oh, that's a fourth way. Oh my God, I just forgot. That's a fourth way of programming this thing, Bluetooth. Yeah, so you can also, <laughs> so we're, you can do it over USB-C, your old school Kenwood connector, wirelessly radio to radio cloning or Bluetooth uh, to either your your laptop or your iOS device. So four separate ways to program this thing. Um, and it, I think it's covering, it, and then it's just pick your poison. Like what's your preference? What do you like doing? I really like the clone feature. I, you know, I have, we have neighbors that we've gifted uh, radios to, and I would love to not have to break out the laptop or configure stuff or, you know, copy paste, you know, Excel sheet lists of frequencies. Just this radio is set up the way I want it. I've been using it, you know, for weeks. I'm ready to share that with other people. Um, bam, just push it to the radio, give it to them. Uh, somebody else joins the your your team and they've got their fresh uh, TDH3, then bam, you're pushing it over to them. Awesome, awesome feature. Again, eating everyone's lunch in 2024. The radio can uh, CTS, uh, CTCSS scan for the inaudible tones that open squelch, uh, otherwise called privacy tones, which are not private at all uh, by some manufacturers. If your buddy has some, you know, off the wall settings, or he comes, you know, tries to join your camping trip with a Midland, you, which is, you know, cannot be changed to join you. You have to adapt to, you know, to join his hard coded silliness, and so he can push to talk. It brings up uh, the tone he's using, and then you just make a separate channel called Goofball, and, and you can start talking to him. So that's. Uh, Menu items uh, 28 and uh, 29 respectively if you're following along at home. It also has another mode if you've got if you've got other people that get confused about which uh, You know which channel they're listening to or being able to monitor two channels at the same time and you want to over, you know simplify it Then there's sync number 36 uh, Maybe it needs a different name, but if you turn that off It just goes down to w one channel it listens to and transmits on at the same time so so in that mode, either of the push to talk buttons would uh, would work for them. It has a scan and save mode where you can you press and hold the number one. It will then listen for another person transmitting and it will look for the frequency, any sort of code, it doesn't have one, bam. Then you know the frequency that they're on and th this works outside of GMRS also. Um, so awesome use is like a bit of a frequency counter uh, but also a quick way that you can you can store that and say okay this is my buddy bill with his goofy midland you'd store it and um you'd be off to the races it's got NOAA channels the uh, national weather radio uh national oceanic uh something something you know the text-to-speech voice that tells you uh when you got big storms coming through or if you're uh you know what the weather's going to be like so if you if you bought yours as a GMRS radio, it comes pre-installed with uh, NOAA radio, National Weather Service, whatever you want to call it, uh, presets. And if they're not there, you can always do like a factory reset and, and set it to, to the GMRS channels that came from the factory. And the way you do that is you turn it off, you hold down push to talk and star at the same time, you turn it on. And you're presented with the options to make this a ham radio, GMRS, or normal. I think normal's uh, unlocked or just open on quite a few bands. So we would choose uh, GMRS, it would reset, uh, but we don't need to do that now. All right, I had to take a quick pause there to uh, pop into town and meet up with some of the Austin Mesh-tastic folks. Uh, shout out to them. 
very hospitable, building that network there, loving it. So to wrap this up, uh, it comes with the normal accoutrement from uh, you know some of these HTs, these handsets. It's got a belt clip and USB chargers and uh, lanyard. For, you, know, you know, again, let me know in the comments if you've seen anybody ever carrying this thing from their wrist dangling down. You know, it's, I don't, I, I don't know where this. Um, some of these things start and then they think it needs to be in their bill of materials or like, oh, Americans want to buy it. You know, if it's got all these different things, this is not one of them. This is probably in every single box of a, you know, a, a radio from, you know, that someone's ever purchased. So um, you can exclude those in the future. <laughs> um, but it's compatible with hand mics uh, that you have through the uh, Kenwood connector. Get, get a decent quality uh, microphone there. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, the audio quality from this is awesome. Being able to listen to, I think it's like eight different bands uh, is, is, is awesome and transmitting on most of those, depending on how you configure the radio. So um, get yours today, get them while they're still available, get them while they're still affordable and you will not regret it. And as always, shill links down in the description below if you wanna get one of these for yourself. It'll take you right to Amazon uh, and you can get it uh, delivered to you pretty quickly. If you want to see more stuff like this in the future, please make sure you subscribe to Julian's Random Projects. Take it easy. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough over and out, over and out.